Hello everyone watching at home, this is Adelaide Eternal, we're bringing you our monthly tournament. This time we're bringing you Australian Highlander. I'm here in the booth, it's Sarvan McClinton, next to me is Jackson the McCorpius. Hi everyone. So for those of you at home who haven't seen Highlander before, you're in for a real treat. For our regulars, we're going to go down to a match between Zoo and an iconic blue-white-red control uh, with a creative spin on it by Drew Carter. He's on the left and Jackson the McCall Pierce himself is playing on the right. So let's have a look at their deck lists. Let's take Jackson's because, I mean, he's here. So tell me about your deck. Uh, well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty much you play cheap costed threats and you turn them sideways. I like that principle. It's all about one drops and two drops. I, I have noticed some new cards in there like Om Nom 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 Renegade <laughs> and uh, Tony Abbott of Carol Keep. These are all pretty nice. Yeah, for sure. There's <laughs> definitely been a few new ones that have come out in the last few years that have definitely given it a nice little boost. How about Harsh Mentor? How's that performing? Uh, Harsh Mentor has been quite strong, actually. Uh, taking three per fetch land seems pretty good. I like it. So if anyone's interested in playing this kind of deck, you're going to see it in action shortly, but uh, I'm sure Jackson will be able to produce a nice deck tech for you in our 7 Minute 7 Point series. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's definitely in the works. Should be out soon. So w you separate your things in pretty mu into pretty much uh, creatures and then burn spells. There's some miscellaneous things in there like Skull Clamp, which I assume allows you to draw more burn spells. <laughs> yep. Nah, <laughs> dudes. Skull Clamp's just too good not to run. It's just put it on a threat, swing it sideways. If they take it, they're taking damage, which is good. If they block it, it's dying. It's drawing you more guys. It's just such a crazy good card. Who needs Ancestral Recall when you get to uh, play two Skull Clamps, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> for four points. <laughs> yeah, it's just ridiculous. Well, let's switch over to Drew's deck list. So he's on a blue-white-red control or American control. I guess we can call it Australian control if it's Australian Highlander. <laughs> and uh, he's... Uh, we've seen him on camera before. He's got some really unique choices like the uh, Cunning Wish package, which allows him access to a variety of really useful instants in the sideboard. And uh, he has a small creature suite that he can use to finish the game, but they're powerful, like Monastery Mentor, being able to trigger that guy multiple times and swinging in with an army of 1-1s one -ones that become 3-3s three or 4-4s four when they attack. Pretty good. Yeah. So uh, let's go down to the match. And I obviously, uh, Jackson knows the result of this game. So let's just get your input in terms of... Uh, uh, the matchup itself, who is favoured in, you know, the aggro versus control match? Because I, I notice Drew doesn't have a combo finish or anything like that, right? Yeah, no, it's it's pretty tricky. Um, definitely the fact that he's not running a true name nemesis is definitely a boost. Mm. Um, a lot of his finishes are pretty small creatures. Uh, so a lot of my burn can just one for one them. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I guess my main... Hope is to get a lot of guys on the ground pretty early and turn them sideways until his uh, life total is just not there anymore. And in the main deck, he's got things like balance and and so on. So that's going to be something you don't want to see. <laughs> yeah, no, balance, balance is a nightmare. Balance is not good at all. So he's led off with a Celestial Colonnade and you're leading off with a Shock Land straight into... Is that Sky Shroud Elite? Yep, Sky Shroud Elite. Very happy to see that non-basic from him turn one. So so Sky Shroud Elite, for those at home, is kind of like a Curd Ape, but your opponent needs to control a non-basic instead of you controlling a forest. Yep, that's exactly what it is. And with this little guy down, beating for two, I assume that from this point onwards, Drew's able to uh, to start to put together his control package with some counter spells or the like. Or oh, here we go, yeah. Jace. Jace is pretty good against you, actually, right? Yeah, Jace is pretty good. Um, definitely, if he was to get it online early and then you know get get to use a bolt twice or something like that, that's that's pretty strong. Mm. Um, and. He can do, once he's got four cards in the graveyard, he can do cool tricks for those at home. If you haven't done this one before, you can assign Jace, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Jace the, not Mind Sculptor, Baby Jace. Yeah. Little Jace, <laughs> original Jace, infant Jace. I don't know what you want to call him. Yeah. <laughs> but you can assign him as a blocker, uh, activate him to discard that fifth card into the graveyard and then flip him and he won't take combat damage. So he's a nice way to kind of fade one attack. Yeah, no, he's, he's very good. Um, yeah, 
really interesting card come that's come out in the the last core set. So I love it when the uh, when brand new cards end up impacting uh, the good formats or some old school formats like Highlander, Legacy, Vintage. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. Jace Marin's Prodigy has seen very uh, limited modern play. Um, seen, I, I saw quite a bit of standard play, I think. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, it's definitely been good in Vintage, good in Highlander. Love it. So speaking of core set flip Planeswalker creature type cards, I think you've just played one, right? Yep, it's a Battle of the Flipwalkers, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins this battle, I wonder? Uh, I'd say Jace is slightly better <laughs> yeah. than old mate Kytheon, but uh, I do quite like Kytheon. I think he's uh, pretty strong. And is that a wild in a cattle? Uh, looks like, looks yeah. like a, a, a leaping leaping kitty. Yes, that is a wild in a cattle. He's, he's always good. Always nice to get him when you've got all three lands. It's good. I see the 0-2 getting into the red zone there. Yeah. <laughs> For those at home, he is looting with the 0-2. <laughs> yes. And that's uh, obviously that Pyroblast is going to do nothing. So that's a uh, yeah. r- r- Pyroblast main deck? Yeah, Pyroblast main deck. It's interesting. It does shut off my mental missteps, so I'll, I'll be aware of that in future <laughs> games, I guess. Yeah, this is uh, definitely not the matchup that Drew was uh, yeah. brewing for, because. but then again, yeah. I, maybe he was brewing for it when you get to crack an engine explosives yeah, on that, one to that, wreck three guys. That explosives was brutal. That was... Uh, explosive play. Yeah, very explosive. <laughs> Um, yeah, that wasn't great. Uh, didn't, I think didn't the advantage a... meter just went kind of dramatically into Drew's favor there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, that's just, you know, just a casual three for one on turn three. That's, oh, that's pretty strong against brutal. my deck. So. And it's not like it was Anger of the Gods killing his own creature. No. You know, it, it killed your creatures only. Yeah. It's pretty good. JC Boy's still hanging around, so. And that's a Fleece Mane line? Yeah, Fleece Mane. So he's two for a three, three that can become monstrous yeah if, if you pay five it becomes monstrous which makes him uh hex proof and uh indestructible so he's he's quite good he's to be honest I, I think i've only even activated him a few times it's rare i get to five lance and uh he's just just a good beat stick really yeah seems good it's a nice watch wolf and uh in the late game, people get afraid of, yeah. oh no, you've got four lands. Oh, what if you play the fifth land and it becomes hexproof? I yeah. won't be able to target it again. And You can do some funny stuff where they just forget it does anything. They bolt it and you, in response, monsterize it, I guess is the word. Monsterize. Yeah. You heard it here. It's a new word. Yeah. Monsterize. Monsterizing lions. To turn specifically is... lions yeah. into, um, what does it become? I don't uh, know. A better lion. Yeah, better lion. Level two right. lion, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So Drew discarded an Electrolyze, so that Jace yeah. isn't flipping anytime soon, but he's got progressive advantage of it. Bit by bit, he's getting to filter through, just like yeah. a Merfolk looter. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty much realised I've got to play a bit of a um, bit of a tempo game at the moment, just rock, rock a few threats and just get some damage in, and if he wipes my board, hopefully follow up with another threat is, is the plan. Seems correct, just the aggro yeah. deck. That... that um, the glare creature that you've summoned is uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth? Uh, no, Spirit isn't main board. Mm. Um, some, it was two mana, so... Uh, two oh, ma- Porcelain Legionnaire. Porcelain Legionnaire, yes. that's the one. I took yep. two life. Yeah, Porcelain Legionnaire. Surprisingly good creature. Uh, I was very iffy about him. He just looked underwhelming. But just having first strike, there's just a lot of little creatures in seven point. Mm. And he's been, he's been really good. Seems sweet. Yeah. So now Drew's making the tricky decision about whether or not he wants to play something first and then flip the Jace yeah. now or whether he wants to, you know, get one more loot out of him. And yeah. I, I'd, I'd, I think that I'd be definitely incentivized to be able to assign him as a blocker and then activate him yeah. uh, just to buy basically three life. It's like gaining three life. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if he, if he flips him now, he's not going to do crazy amounts because I can just swing in and kill him next turn. So... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's interesting. That Ancestral Visions is, you know, oh, there goes an Entreat the Angels. Entreat yeah. the Angels. So that that Ancestral Visions is probably, you know, when when that resolves, it means you're out of the game, right? Yeah. Like, you're going to try and kill him before that happens. Yeah, Visions is visions is bad news. He, are, he already three for one me earlier with the Engineered Explosives. So, um, yeah, the, the game plan is to, I guess, try and kill him before that uh, resolves. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. And uh, you're fetching end of turn, just thin out the deck. Yeah. So you don't get flooded. And you're also... Ah, very nice. Yeah. Path to exile. Sweet plays here. You know, preventing that guy from flipping over is a really big thing. And this is something that Drew has to answer. And if he counters it, yeah. say with some kind of uh, cryptic command type effect, then, then you you can burn him with impunity the next turn. Or, oh, days. Yeah, that was Punishing. Yeah, my... Oh. A big one is... Uh, I felt he did definitely have the counter spell up. And just pathing into turn gave me a bit of an open turn. But unfortunately, he's still got two mana available. So... Mm, that yeah that was pretty rough so drew here uh playing it masterfully trying to make sure that he can pace himself out and ensuring that he's got just the right amount of uh, buffer in his life total because now that jace is going to be able to uh block and flip yeah now when that once that jace flips it could be could be doing some pretty nasty things i think yeah definitely given that you've got two creatures of exactly the same power of three he can just flip here anyway minus two one of them Basically yep. taking one extra damage, but he's getting one extra loyalty counter on that Jace because it flips on his turn and he gets to activate it. Yeah. Um, There's definitely times where you want to assign a block, you know, in vintage against a lodestone golem or something and you need to save five life. It's pretty important. Yeah, it seems <laughs> pretty good. Um, top seems all right. Um, and he's got the fetch, so he gets some yeah, it's strong bit of card quality. So he's obviously Jace isn't on three. He's probably just going to update that specifically in a second yeah um it's meant to be on five but it'll go it'll probably go up to six minusing one of your guys but we'll see we'll see what his decision is here it looks like he's really wanting to tap out here which is which he's is got something interesting oh balance yeah oh that's rough before yeah. his ancestral visions comes off the stack so he's going to be able to refill in two turns time and he's basically just uh killing two creatures and in the process, though, he's going to lose two lands. I don't know. Yeah, no, balance Balance is no fun against me. Uh, it's pretty good. Often just sort of wipes the board for two. And so here you're doing this, the old sneaky burn something? Yeah, a lightning helix, that Jace that's meant to be on five loyalty. Oh, so, no. Uh, yeah, unfortunately for Drew, if you'd uh, cap caught that before it happened uh, he'd still have the J. So. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> he was probably in preparation placing it yeah. down something because he wants to flash something back <laughs> or something yeah, like that i don't know i'm not sure um is it is it jason mind sculptor that comes with three loyalty yeah that, that yeah, could be it that sometimes. might have been it i mean vince prodigy's a new new ish card still i guess maybe just Assumed all Jaces have three loyalty. I'm not sure. Yeah, we're so used to placing a three dice on a on a Jace. Yeah, you'd be familiar with that, um, Jackson the Macolpius, JTMP. <laughs> three are there three loyalty counters on you when you were uh, <laughs> when you come into play? <laughs> we don't know. It's the yeah. eternal mystery. I'm not sure. I'll ask my mum next time. <laughs> so see her. So. So balance equalized your lands down to three and your cards in hand to one or two? One. Because uh, you, you it looks you like one. Looks like looks. one. But with the visions in the top, he's 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 got a bit bit happening. I think. Yeah. He could have. Um... Oh no, that wouldn't work. So we'll say we'll say that he minus his Jace to uh, preparatorily flash back something in the graveyard and yeah. then decided not to. Yeah. Tin Street Hooligan? Yep. Oh, what a hooligan. I love that, dude. This guy coming in and wrecking the place. Yeah. Wrecking his sense divining top. Yeah, it's sweet. Not so Just good. Just go like, active. this forces you to activate it. Yeah, stops him fetching end of turn. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could have just fetched Ooh. in response. Yeah. Value values here and there. Value eking it out. So that's one card in your hand. I wonder what that is. And this is... Drew's in such a good position here yeah. with the... Uh, the card draw off the top and then the preordain and then the ancestral visions coming off next turn he's in a really good spot yeah this is not good i'd really prefer him to be on a lower life total it'd be a lot more interesting if he was on you know say he's on six you know a top deck price of progress it could be price could be is pretty, pretty good. good here he has yeah. to activate activate um and arid mesa and fail to find <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, yeah, taking two from the Tin Street Hooligan. Yeah. Wrecking the place. And uh, is that a Mother of Runes in your hand? Uh, I'm not 
not sure. Oh, it's two, two mana, so it's Jitte. Jitte. Oh, Seems nice. good. Really good against those creature decks, but it's always nice when you see your point, even if it's not directly relevant here. Yeah. Once you get a couple of counters on it, being yeah. able to save your creatures from lightning bolts is really good. And any any threat, if he doesn't answer it within a turn, it's you know going to be letting me ping creatures or gain life or get real big. So making your ten street hooligan swole seems yes, pretty good. Yeah, it's a little little goblin in the back streets wielding this uh, samurai sword. <laughs> And so the that's a mother of runes. Uh, that is yes, that is a mother of runes. Oh, okay. So for those of you who don't know at home, a jite is a Japanese uh, weapon <laughs> that that was used by police officers and people who uh, uh, upheld the law because it was used as a defensive weapon to catch swords. Oh, yeah. There you go. Sometimes if it was a sword breaker or some such. Oh, you snap mental missteps, the mother of runes. Yeah, mi- misstep that. Get it out of here. Yeah, fair enough. Seems good. Once your creatures have protection from any colours he can cast, it's yeah. really hard. Especially with oh, look the at this. Draw GTA. some lands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dak Faden. Oh, Dax, no. Yeah. Oh, no. I think we're going to see my favourite planeswalker come and do the dirty on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It's about to happen. No, don't play the land. You've got to discard to Dak. No, nah, he yep. watch, yeah, this is this is pretty nasty. Yep. He steals That's my GTA. Rough. Oh, and he's got two and to equip two to snapper, equip. Yeah. Oh no. It's not good. It's not good. That, that life is gain. Life gain that is Li- thug life. Yeah. Right there. He he pings um he pings Tin Street, which I'm not sure. I mean, if I was to top deck Seems burn. Good. If you top deck uh, some kind of um, six, six mutagenic growth type not not that you have it, but Yeah, I scoop here because there's nothing really I can do. Yep. Um, Dak do that. Yeah, even Boris Charming just gains a life in response. Ooh, so yeah, that was rough. Yeah, he definitely, definitely top decked a few huge bombs. Uh, that ancestral that really visions. Dak. I think the ancestral visions drew three card. The three cards. The first two yeah. cards were lands. Yeah, and the third card was Dak, and that yeah. was the biggest change. That was huge. That that Dak. Yeah, Dak was crazy. If Dak didn't come, uh, yeah, if Dak didn't come down, um, I just. You definitely could have taken the game over with yeah, Jitter. A couple yeah, of counters on Tin Street. Jitter, make it big. Um, even top decking Boros Charm, you know. Yeah. Definitely well played by Drew. Managed to pace his life total and uh, uh, ensure that he had his outs, <laughs> playing to his outs. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it was an interesting game. Um, it was pretty swingy. Definitely that engineered explosives mm. put in oh, a absolutely. huge amount of work. No. That was <laughs> that was the crazy. that was the critical card. Yeah. That was huge. I mean, if you imagine I'm swinging in for what six, seven damage a turn with those three little critters I had early game. That you know he's only on four, mm. and I felt like I got blown out or two, yeah. three times in that game. So. Oh, the the blowouts were just strung back to back, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, he is good against the creature deck with lots of one drops, right? Yeah. No. So, in terms of sideboard, what do you bring? I don't know if you remember exactly what you brought in in this matchup, but what do you generally bring in against um, uh, control? Yeah, there's there's definitely a few bombs. Uh, Thrun is the main one. Thrun's just crazy. Like to be honest, he doesn't even fit in my curve that well. Um, but he's just so good. He's kind of like choke, where it's like you have to answer this threat. Yeah, and they have so much difficulty answering it. They they have difficulty answering choke. They have difficulty answering thrun. Yeah. So (laughs) no, um, thrun's great. Spirit of the Labyrinth is great. I like Um, the three one body, and I mean the the denial of card draw is is a huge bonus, but it's really crucial that Zoo has those you know two drops that bash for three, right? Yeah. No, he's he's really like aggressively like printed with his like power like mm. just that three damage and denying card draw is just a really nice anti-control blue card like if he was a 2-2 just like uh uh ether swarm canonist or something people would play him as a hate card yeah but this guy's a three one yeah three like, one. bashing for three good, is huge good clock um if you happen to draw clamp uh you can just clamp him and draw the cards if you really need to I like it. Um, the only other one really worth mentioning is Red Elemental Blast and Choke. Just good anti-blue cards. Eidolon is good good here as well, right? Yeah, Eidolon is good. Yeah, Eidolon's yep. good. Just... Sulfuric Vortex is good here too, right? Yeah, I think I did sideboard that yeah. in as well. Sulfuric just like... Because you just always going to get him to a lower life total mm. than you, so... Just like Miracles in Legacy or RIP Miracles. <laughs> good riddance. Yeah. Um, just like Miracles in Legacy... 
it has difficulty answering. Control has so much difficulty answering sulfuric yeah. vortex. Once it's resolved, it's going to do you two and then four and then six and then eight. It's just a nightmare. Yeah, it's so crazy. Let's look at what Drew brings in here. He's got... Obviously, he has to maintain his uh, Cunning Wish package in the sideboard, so that's always a little bit tricky to balance. Yeah. But against you, he does have uh, Forked Bolt, Pyroclasm, Radiant Flames, and... Uh, yeah. So just a little bit of a little bit of marginal removal. Yeah, um, pyroclasm is a bit average mm, uh, because mm. I, I do have a lot of Kurt Ape or yeah, three you know, friends, guys, of right? Kurt Ape, so. friends, friends of Kurt Ape. Friends of Kurt Ape. Yeah, like is that, a, is that a help help group? Yeah, for uh, <laughs> those for little critters, little critters that end up to... getting killed by EE. Yeah, they and talk just... about their the stressful situations they've had being destroyed by engineered explosives on one. Yeah, they're just trying to get by. They're just trying to do their own thing and. Some people just can't appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say his sideboard's um, pretty lackluster against me, in all honesty. Mm, um, mm. I don't hate Gideon of the Trials. Oh, that's the if new Gideon. Gideon. Yeah, that, yeah, it's the one where you can zero and you can't lose the game unless uh, if you control a Gideon Planeswalker. That, I mean, if he had enough cards to sideboard out, I could potentially imagine sideboarding that in, but... Oh. Mm. Yeah. I can imagine you burning that that Gideon away though, right? Oh yeah, Some direct but, damage. You know, if I happen to neither burn spell for a while and I've got a lot of critters, I don't know, might I don't know. Mm. So you're oh, you started off with the yeah. Om Nom Renegade. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's just such a good card. Uh, he's just perfect for the deck. He runs so many fetch lands. He's always always a two three almost. When he's not, he's still annoying. He's just hanging around. He's good with the clamp because you don't want to block him. Stealing a lot of damage, yeah. I like it. I like him. Who wouldn't play a two three? Uh, who wouldn't play a curd ape with the uh, death touch? With death touch, yeah, you know, that's it's great. Crazy. Occasionally, you don't trigger a revolt, but that's very marginal, right? You know, 90, yeah. 95% ninety five percent of the time, you're probably triggering a revolt, aren't you? Yeah, most times. Even like sometimes I draw a late ish game and I've got a bunch of critters and they've got like a big blocker, like a Gurmag angle or something. I can just mm. swing in with everything, and then he blocks a, you know, one of the critters, deal build, deal a bit of damage, get that revolt trigger, play him second main. It's good. It's pretty good. And your turn two was good too. Strangleroot Geist. Yeah, no. Hasting in there. Strangleroot Geist is just so good in this deck. Love it. So good. It's so great card. Drew's uh, onto his two mana. Obviously, being one turn behind is always rough. Yeah. Because his mana leaks and all those kind of, uh, you know, counter spell type effects, miscalculation and all the sensor and all that don't really come online when you need them to because he would have wanted to counter, say, Strangleroot Geist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he he definitely wanted to count that strength yeah. guys. Um, so being on the draw is really tough against Zoo. Yeah. No Geist is great. It just like just his removal other, other than his, you know, path to exile swords, it's mm, just mm. pretty dead to it really. Strangleroot Guys is really good with clamp actually. Oh. I love it with clamp. Play it. Sat, kill him, draw two, then he comes back. He's a three two. Equip the clamp. He's a four one. Bash for four. Yeah, and seems they good. Don't want to kill it. If they kill it, it's just um yeah. There's four cards I've gotten. So yeah, he's Jace. Yeah, um, fetch land crap. Yeah, Jace again. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. Red that elemental was... blast. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, seems good. So he 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 taps out to play Jace, who would be lovely to be able to try and uh, manage these creatures. But red and white bordered red elemental blast yep. right there just for the tilt additional tilt value. Yep, <laughs> it's all about tilting them blue players, right? As a zoo deck, that's it. So now I've got you know I've got two mana end of turn, three three or maybe four mana next turn to play yeah. around with. Lots of stuff. Helixing yeah. end of turn as well. Yeah, this is that's just being mana efficient. You don't care about. You know, playing yeah. around days, that kind of stuff. Because it, if he dazes, he's so far behind. So Sometimes with Zoo, like, he, Lightning Helix, when their face at 11 seems potentially not that good sometimes. But mm. it's just it's just worth getting in there early, getting him to a really low life total. And then every single top deck bolt or anything is just such a bomb. So Yeah. This is a Tony Abbott. Yeah. Old mate Tony Abbott. 
flipping people off yep. as, as he does. I have flip, flips off a goblin guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, my goblin guy. Yeah, what this, is going on? This, sucks. this is the one card in the deck. That would have been that, able to attack. Yeah, because I already had the wow. guys. That's the one one card in my whole deck that is a reason to play Tony Abbott in your first main phase. You're and directly punished by yeah. Tony Abbott. So that sucks, but... But you're in a pretty good spot. My board looks good. <laughs> um, his, his main way out some sort of board wipe, but then he, he'd be tapping out. I and... mean, if he if he goes Cascade Bluffs, Anger of the Gods next turn, you're going to cry. I'll cry here in the studio with you, because <laughs> that just seems so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but it's an out. Like, Drew, Drew has outs. He's got Radiant Flames as well, probably in from the sideboard, playing, a, you know, a, a mountain and then casting Radiant Flames... Hitting everything. I mean, Strangle Root Geist will come back, but it will at least give him another turn and reduce you down to one critter. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky that he doesn't have too many sweepers. I guess I didn't know that when we were playing. But, mm, um, mm. Yeah, definitely um, balance would be good right now. He, yep. But no, he Shuffle sees up. the writing on the wall. It's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, that's... So, this is <laughs> yeah. The, I, w- at least we've seen how the two decks would play out. I mean, the first game was a really good example of how Drew's deck plays out, which is just trying to walk that very fine tightrope line to balance until you stabilize, and once you stabilize, you take over the game so dramatically. Yeah. And then this was a perfect game with the zoo, where you just get to be aggressive, put your opponent under pressure, and nothing they do can actually really stop you. Yeah, just when when you curve out nicely with Zoo and you get... I, 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 I don't know what my win percentage is with the hasty guys like Strangled Geist and Goblin mm. Guard and such, but I swear every, every game I play those early, I just win. Like, yeah, it seems so seems much like work. It. it seems like if you, if you have one of your haste guys, it's almost like you had a normal guy, but you also shocked them. Yeah. The two. Yeah. And that just seems really good. Especially if they end up just removing it the next turn. He's already done a bit of damage. It costs them a card to get rid of it. It's pretty good. So, uh, there was quite a bit of zoo, actually, at this tournament. It was it was really interesting to see how the Adelaide meta has evolved. And uh, whilst we don't really have much of a combo scene here, we've got a lot of control versus aggro and mid-range. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and so, because of that, obviously, all of the decks have started to tailor themselves to the Adelaide meta over the last course of the last year. And we see people with, you know, control decks with main deck Anger of the Gods because it's really good. Yeah. It's just normally you wouldn't see that in, say, a, a twin deck. You wouldn't see uh, Anger of the Gods main. But in this meta, it's it's scary. It's scarily good. It, it really, really... Uh, it kills the Zoo aggro decks. And it also really mitigates some of the, uh, the power of the elf-based mid-range decks yeah so uh it's really really interesting to see how the meta goes and then there's also because there's a little bit less combo when you do play combo sometimes the control decks can't actually um police you as easily because they're not running uh say spell pierce yeah spell pierce is really really good in a balanced meta with lots of uh, equal parts combo and control and aggro because uh you're relevant against two-thirds of the meta but when there's not much combo around, spell pierce is really marginal. You'd like you'd rather have is it charm or some other uh, flexible card that also say kills a creature, also filters you, also counters when you need it to. Um, so as we see more people embracing uh, com- uh, the combo decks, pro tip: I'll be rocking a combo deck next time. I think, <laughs> given the, given the way the meta's been shaping out, yeah, we'll probably see a rise in uh, spell pierce and and those kind of. Uh, uh, n- powerful uh, but cheap and situational counter spells, and we might also see the uh, dominance of zoo decks start to slide a little bit, or having to adjust your uh, strategy a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, combo is obviously a worst matchup, right? Yeah, combo yeah. is yeah. is pretty bad. Uh, having said that, I did beat a doomsday deck in Melbourne Whoa. somehow. Whoa. Um, yeah, hot uh, off your your uh, top eight. At, at at the Eternal Masters, the Highlander Masters, yeah, in Melbourne, uh, with Zoo beating Doomsday, yeah. I need to hear this story. No, it was, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, basically, I lost. I think he comboed out turn two, game one. Yep, um, sounds about right against did, Agro. <laughs> yeah, he did this Doomsday pile involving Black Lotus and putting the Black Lotus back, and 
I can't quite remember what happened. Um, game two, I just uh, early Eidolon just did a lot of work. Eidolon seems good against yeah, him. Yeah, Eidolon was really good. Um, and game three, just strip mine. Strip mine. Strip mine. Yeah. Just just running that in your deck just gives you weird free wins occasionally. I they love keep it. a two land a hand. You strip mine that first land, and they can't come back. I he, like it when aggro decks keep combo honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was really surprised. Um, uh, yeah, just did a lot of work. Strip my wasteland. They're good points. Lot, lots of weird free wins you can get from them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So going into game three here, you're on the draw. <clears throat> obviously, uh, I think that the being on the draw obviously disproportionately hinders Drew. If if he was on the draw, he'd be at like you know thirty percent to win this game three but he's on the play here yeah you're on the draw and it it doesn't hurt you as badly as it hurts him you know when when zoo is ahead yeah. it's ahead yeah, but when definitely. controls ahead it's not there's there's so many ways where you can just really you know respond to a spell and burn them burn their face and then that because of that they can't tap out to pass cast a spell so they wait a little bit longer and allows you to attack with a little dude and so I think that it's quite a it should be quite a good matchup with him on the play in in game three. Yeah, it feels a lot more even. More fair. When when I'm on the play, um, uh, you're definitely yeah, or you're already good. ahead. Yeah. It's good. It's where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> dice dice roll is a critical part of doing well uh, with Zoo. I think. Maybe. Yeah. So he leads off with the basic island psychic on the uh, price of progress. Yep. I don't know if you got price of progress, but <laughs> uh, goblin guide. Oh, this is. Drew is would not be happy here. This is literally one of the best openings you can have. Right? Yeah, he gets it, gets the land. That, but... that builds him up against a mulligan, but I'm pretty sure you're okay with allowing. Yeah, you know, Goblin Guard's yeah. downside. You know, it's it is relevant, but you know, in Zoo, you just got to run it. It's too good not to run. Yeah. Sometimes you're paying one, and over the course of the game, it's dealing six damage. So it's just so ridiculous. Good. And now here, he you know has to. Uh, miscalculation something or you know do yeah. do something to your second turn play but you're still bashing in with this this 2-2 two two that's already got him down to 18 now 16 yeah no it's gonna do a lot of work <clears throat> so bashes in 16 like that I mean that's the clock that you want to see oh, he forgot his trigger hmm. that's mm, interesting that's I, I didn't notice that so uh, uh, that's right technically is your trigger right something yeah. like that I, I don't know yeah i guess so. that's all right um we will we will post hoc uh give you both a game a warning for failure to maintain yeah. game state i'll give myself a Mid- game warning yeah, that's, that's all right <laughs> we'll do that it's not not very uh good of me i don't think so <laughs> at least we know it wasn't intentional so yeah um so uh, this is your turn to play yep what is it we're gonna see it um, can't tell what it is. That, Something red. That's a bit shiny, isn't it? Um, something looking... looks red, doesn't it? Tint Street Hooligan. I'm not sure. I don't think it would be Tint Street. It's red. Oh, harsh mental. Harsh mental. Yeah. So that yeah, he has to counter that. Like, yeah, if he has the miscalculation or something, then that's that's definitely one of the best targets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, harsh mental is pretty good. So that was strangle root guys to some of the best targets to hit. Yeah, but obviously strangle root guys not coming down second main phase. Yeah, or or if he has a spell snare or something. Mm, let's see what it is. Uh, counter spell. Yeah. spell. Actual literal actual counter spell. Yeah, the OG of yeah. the counter spells. Better than taking three from every fetch land. Right. Yep, yep. Yeah. I'd, yeah, I'd pay that. <laughs> yeah, Harsh Mentor. Uh, this is already really feeling like a... Yeah, oh, that... Yeah, that. if that resolved, it would have been a very, very uphill battle. Yep. Jace, Jace Yeah, every Jace game. again. He wants to join the good. zoo party. Yeah, if Dead Jace... Keen. <laughs> He's like, let me in, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also traumatized by energy explosives. Oh, wait, I was still on the battlefield after you guys died. Yeah, he, he saw the... He saw, saw the it, wrath, yeah, he saw it. so... Rancor. Yep. Oh, is this a mental misstep or something? Path to exile, yep. Path to exile. So, yeah, yeah res- responding to, to the enchantment um, is really good to actually get rid of it permanently. Yeah. Giving you a land here is probably nigh irrelevant. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he he he's happy with it even giving you the land, given that it gets rid of essentially two cards. Yeah. Nah, seems good. 
It's always good to deal with a Rancor early on. Rancor has mm. actually been very, very good in my list. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It's like a it's like a really it's like a bone spitter on gas. Yeah. Right? On steroids. But bone spitter for those of you who've played cubes and the like is amazing in cubes. <laughs> it's really good. Yes. The amount of pressure it puts on is great. And this is just like bone spitter with trample. Yeah. No. <laughs> Rancor's just yeah, pretty pretty classic magic card really. It's uh, I remember back in the day mm. playing it in my my casual green elf decks. So yeah, it's good. Jace the mind sculptor. There's a lot of Jaces on Whoa. his side of the board right now. So. Is this bounce creature time? Because uh, obviously it's going to get killed otherwise. You'd have to. You have right? to bounce a creature. It's literally a removal spell here. Yeah, because um, Kasali's you know exulting in. So yeah, yep. So now he's going to not activate the Jace for his prodigy until something yep. is really, really good in his graveyard that he really wants to flash back. Yeah. Like that path to exile later on the game. But so I've hit five lands, which isn't optimal. No, um, that's that's probably a bad spot to be in. Yeah. Four actual lands that you've drawn. Yeah, so that's that's not great. Um generally with Zoo you don't really want I've won games on one land before. Kind of only want mm. one or two, so I see you're fetching the basics. Is that's obviously fear of uh, back to basics and yeah. those terrible, terribly Just, powerful things. Because obviously, you don't know whether uh, he runs. We know that he doesn't. Yeah. But uh, at the time when you see your opponent play basic planes, basic uh, island, you know that a they could be fetching around uh, back, uh, around your price of progress. But there's also the chance that they run back to basics or or blood moon. It might be... I, I do have Blood Moon in my sideboard. I can't quite remember, but I might have sideboarded it in. So I'm mm. not entirely sure what that is. That glare mm. is... You're a pro at um, summoning yeah, no. Wall of Glare. Yeah, Wall it's of like Glare. It's like your commander in this. Yeah. You can just summon Wall of Glare anytime. It's... Yeah. I'm not quite sure what that is. I might be able to figure out when we see how much damage it deals. It looks like or... a multicolor card. No, he's activated Jace. activated Jace. Jace. That's... Before activating the other Jace? Yep, I'll point it out. He might... It might be that he wasn't aware of the, the legendary rule with Jace. Yeah. So... Yeah, oh, for, for those at home... For those at home, it's type line is a Jace. It's a Jace type. <laughs> yeah. So that's... Even though they have different names, that's essentially the legend rule for Planeswalkers. It's based on their type. So he really wanted to loot... See, I, I would have definitely bounced back your creature again with your Jason Mind Sculptor and keep bouncing it back because then you're forced to attack the Jason Mind Sculptor, yeah. kill it, and then he gets to flip his Jace Friends Prodigy and then minus one of your dudes yeah. and then flashback past to Exile. It's just so much value and allowing him get it, to get into the late game. Yeah, I'm assuming maybe he just forgot the, the Jace legendary rule. Um, it's either that or he really wanted to loot. Like, yeah. really desperately wanted to Not loot. Not entirely sure what's in his hand. So we've got a e. explosives. E. Yeah, bouncing so. a creature and then EE e for two. Yep. This keeps Jace, the Mind Sculptor, alive. And yep. it makes a bit more sense about why what he wanted to keep alive. He obviously values Jace, the Mind Sculptor, more because yep. it is, like, strictly better yep. in, in a vacuum. But against creatures, Jace, for Prodigy is really good. Yeah. Double path to exile is just so good. And you can see how... Jace, the Mind Sculptor, manages creatures by going down. Yeah. Jace, Prince Prodigy, manages creatures going up. Oh, that's a good point. I never yeah. noticed that. Yeah. Really good. So, but either way, he's got uh, Jace, the Mind Sculptor, which is a point, on yep. an empty board. But here's Tony Abbott. Yep. What does he flip? Is it a land? E I don't oh, know. I guess you, you have to exile it, right? So we'll find You out exile it, and then you may play it. Wow, that is a that's good. Porcelain Legionnaire? Porcelain. Yep, that's and you a porcelain do it pain, legendary. Not, no fear of days. Don't pay the... Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Sure. I sure. think I pay life there and don't yeah, get dazed. Yeah, that's probably the correct play. Um, for some reason, I was concerned about my life total. So. That's all right. You got rewarded for it. So he's Jace he brainstorming. Yep. That that brainstorm is basically the last brainstorm he's going to do unless he gets two removal spells. Yeah. So Or, or a wrath effect, but, you know... Like we said, he doesn't have a very high density of wraths, but he has looted a lot, so he could yeah, have easily found true. one. Yeah, something like a balance would be extremely good right now. Mm. Um, hmm. Even if it hits his hand, he only discards, I think, one card, so it's not too bad. Yeah. 
Or actually, he might only have three, and so balance would be perfect here. Yeah. You have the same number of lands, it just basically rats away your creatures. So three mana? What is it, like Radiant Flames or something? Um, not sure. I mean, I'd prefer I Anger, so but he doesn't have double red. Blue, white, and something. Radiant like. Flames. It is Radiant Flames, yeah. I'll... So he does Radiant Flames for two because he's not... He's tapping one colourless. Yeah. Which is enough to get rid of your guys. But yeah. you... I mean, I would play around Mutagenic Growth here. Right, so we got Hangerback Walker. See, because the Hangerback Walker could have been played off off colourless. Yeah. Anyway, so what you do is you just kind of... For three, Assume... Yeah. Do it for three, because if you had, say, Mutagenic Growth, not saying that you have it in your list, yeah. but if you did, it's something to play around. Thrun. Yeah, yeah we got Thrun. Thrun, Big Daddy Thrun. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of Thrun. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. But Hangerback Walker so is good. pretty frustrating, because uh, I want to bash that Jace, but, but Hangerback... Yeah. Hangerback will basically He's block hanging it back. Hanging back. Hanging back, hanging back. Hanging back, hanging back. Hanging back, so. hanging hangin with Jace. <laughs> is this a cycle sensor? Sensor. Okay. All right. Yep. So he's uh, cycle that. That hanger back walker is actually going to be really good as a blocker, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Let's him use Jace a lot. So. Mm. Normally, Thrun's a real nightmare because we're, the control deck has to say cryptic command tap your yeah. dudes, and you just it's just a constant losing battle. But hanger back just blocking constantly is going to be really good yeah i don't know what wizards is thinking they really should have given thrun trample i mean oh, yes. it's just like seriously guys make him a three three with trample three three with trample still play a four yeah. two with four trample. two oh he gets blocked so you but have to regen. Re regen him like lots yeah, though yeah that would be i can see right. it i can see four two with trample yeah that'd be so good that'd be, that'd be sweet yeah you know, just... i should run troll ascetic do you remember troll ascetic <laughs> i remember guy. that guy for those at home that's just three mana three two can't be targeted two mana regen so it's like baby thrun thrun's little brother yeah his kid brother little troll buddy a troll being i oh, did cyborg in gideon so here comes gideon of the trials so, so yeah this is a new card and as with all new cards and myself I don't have no idea what they do because until someone <laughs> brings it into an eternal format, I don't know what it does. All I know so, is that zero, that zero that lets you get the emblem, which, you know, lets you not lose the game, which seems... um That's right. That's I, pretty good. I can imagine a lot of decks, like Storm is the main one that comes to mind when I think of that, that emblem. Just such a pain. Yeah. And it's actually really good here because that plus one basically prevents all damage from a permanent yeah but it's a target permanent yeah. so normally it's really good against creatures from memory i think he targeted my stomping ground why not you know yeah. may as well right if i had a some sort of yeah if you got know, some nissa anime. type anime. creature that makes it into a, <laughs> it makes it into a creature yeah i don't know you know it's no you go to cast that spell that turns all lands into creatures oh yeah away um, rude awakening or something of it no Oh, yeah. There's a couple of them, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I, I know. That that one where you untap them all, it's got entwined, they all become entwined, two yeah, twos. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. I remember that playing Modern Masters oh, 13. Boris. Well. Boris is coming out to play. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did want to get that Jace, but that Gideon was going to do a lot of work. <laughs> that so. makes sense. I mean, the Gideon, the Gideon would have eventually... I mean, let's see. You kill Jace. Yeah. And Gideon pluses again goes to five. And, oh, this is beautiful. Yep. Well... Pretty happy with and that. And that's why you Boris Chum, the Gideon as well. Good. Hanger back. Is Hanger back. Hanging back. back. So. Out comes a 1 1 flippy flappy guy. <laughs> and. It's a Thopter, I think, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. I don't know how it all works. I don't know what the flavor is, I guess. Oh, it's a hanger, so it walks around and it's an aviation hanger and filled with uh, flying things. Makes oh, sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I End of turn really Mystical Tutor. So this was yeah. the last card in his hand. Yeah, so what you're going to see here is it's... something pretty brutal. Oh, no. Yep. That's so good. So... Pretty much right now in my head, I was crying because yeah. that is the perfect 
uh, thing for this situation. Oh yeah, and you're the like, fact oh, I can't believe he top decked mystical, it. Oh wait a second, he made yeah. he makes it a top, it makes it an amazing top deck. <laughs> and the fact that Mystical uh, puts it on top, which is meant to be oh, a downside, man. but it's perfect for. Um, oh, perfect for so um, miracles. So. That's so good. Yeah, my Thrun isn't so happy. All these angels flipping about in the air. So, yeah. well, uh, at least we know. Yeah, at least we know so that how it. that all works and why that mystical tutor is in in the deck. I mean, that's that's a beautiful setup. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, definitely. Like I haven't seen too many miracles cards no. in Seven Point, but, but in Treat, look. So good. That looked amazing like, in that game. Yeah, especially with Mystical Tutor. That's that's beautiful. That's, well, that that's was really strong. That was an exciting game, and like we said, it was very um, you know even, and yeah. it was really interesting to see how it all played out. Uh, and well played by both of you. Thank you. So we'll. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in round two, and we'll be back with some more Highlander for you.